Hi everyone, today I will be reviewing Meet Cute by Noga Noelli. The logline reads, when a woman finds a time machine in a downtown Manhattan nail salon, she uses it to keep traveling back in time 24 hours to make her previous night's date perfect. So this was featured on the 2018 blacklist and uh, is right now was picked up by Weed Road Production Company. And uh, the reason I was interested in the script was Script Shadow essentially posted a review saying he really liked it. And so that piqued my curiosity a bit more. Originally, I was just going to ignore it because I'm not that much of a fan of romantic comedies or those types of scripts. But um, given that he liked it, I thought I should give it a try. So this review will be featuring quite a few spoilers. Um, in general, what I would say is, you know, if this is your type of thing, if you like romantic comedies, um, if you like these types of different types of scripts, if you like films like Eternal Sunshine and Spotless Mind, while the script is not at that same level, it's not at the same complexity, it's still in that same vein and it's still in that same tone. So I think you guys should definitely go into it blind and just read it. Uh, depending on how fast you read, like for me, I read it in an hour. Most of the script was dialogue, so it's very, very fast to read. Um, and it was, you know, um, nicely written, very clean, very crisp. So I think, um, you know, if you have an hour, you should, you guys should check it out. Um, it, it certainly wasn't a, a script where I was like, I want my time back or I felt like it was a waste. It was pretty good and it had some interesting aspects to it that I'll be discussing. And in order to discuss that, I'll have to go into some spoilers. So, um, so check it out first and then come back and watch it. So essentially the script is about, the story follows a girl called Sheila who finds a nail salon time machine and that allows her to go back and relive her, her perfect night. So it starts right in the time loop and it's apparently I think her like her 10th one and um, she's meeting Gary and it's the whole cliches with the time loop like she knows what he's gonna say, she knows what he's gonna think and they, they go and do their little routine. So the way the script worked and the way the story evolved was we kept getting bits and pieces of information and you know every 20 to 25 pages or every loop essentially um, we would get a different piece of information and um, Sheila would reveal something or she would reveal that she had lied um, and so that way the story kind of naturally evolved in a way where you didn't really know what was going to happen next and there was a hit and miss for me so essentially what we have is an unreliable narrator and that's okay I think that can work you know in Memento it worked very well um, and I didn't I didn't mind that part so much uh, I think the the main problems I have with the script are the sci-fi aspects so so essentially the the big reveal in the in the script or one of the big reveals is that the time travel machine that she's using um, doesn't is not restricted to just 24 hours so she can actually go much further back into the past and I'm not sure how I felt about that um, conceit initially because I felt it was kind of cheating like the whole genre here is the time loop and how are you gonna exploit that and use that and this just kind of suddenly just became a time travel movie itself and so I think for readers for different readers they'll respond to it differently for me I was kind of like okay let's see where it, it's gonna go with that and essentially it just went in the typical time travel fashion where she tries to go back in time to change Gary and mold him into something um that's that she would like more into someone that's more um assertive and someone who takes more control of his life so essentially to change him and I thought that part was actually quite interesting and quite dark I liked how extensively she went into it and I think at that point we cared about the characters enough to be invested in the story and to really uh, feel their anger and feel their pain and um, feel their love so I, th I, I think overall that part was fine but uh, I did feel it was kind of cheating on the on the genre itself of the time loop um, in the 24 hours and basically like just kind of these convenient story conceits and plots that's evolving from the from the script itself it didn't really feel like it, it was as natural and there was a lot of flippant stuff now i think the script in general can get away with that because it's a dark romantic comedy it's not like a serious sci-fi film so i think that part's okay and that depends again on the audience and how invested they are in the story and i'll talk a bit more about the sci-fi parts later but i just want to talk about something else so again we're looking at a dark romantic comedy and i think the main question with any of these types with any comedy in general it doesn't make you laugh is it funny is it humorous is it entertaining is it witty and uh for me it, uh there were definitely moments in the script that I actually laughed i thought they were quite funny well done but this is not like laugh out loud funny this is not like you know you're going to be laughing the whole time um it's, it wasn't that type of a comedy, but um, I think it, it did enough to keep me invested and to keep me engaged. And it did have a certain, a nice blend of, of, of humor, but also darkness and also meaning. And, um, and so I think I like that blend overall. 
One one main problem I had with the script was uh, the secondary characters, and in particular, Chel Soon. So essentially, she's the Korean uh, nail salon person who knows about this time machine and tells it tells about it to Sheila. Uh, and is this and I I did, the reason I didn't like her is because she wasn't that a that well developed, and b she just was doing things flippantly, like she didn't have any motivation or any purpose. You know, she was just doing things, and it's like it really took me out of the story because you have someone who has access to a time machine and, um, you know, she's not using it more to her advantage. Like she hasn't told anyone about it. She just decides to tell this lady about it. And, um, it just seemed like the Chel Soon character was just doing something and she was just there to serve a purpose. And she wasn't actually like a character on her own and she wasn't that involved and she didn't have her own complexities or her own motivations. I think that's a big criticism. So if you contrast that with Eternal Sunshine of Spotless Mind, you have Elijah Wood's character who's like an operator and he actually is more involved in the story because he uses the machine that they have to actually control um and influence um kate winslet's character and i thought that part was interesting so i was thinking maybe like even in this script it'd be more interesting to see like if if she's actually a guy or male instead or even like a female and she's attracted to sheila or whatever and she uses and she's content with kind of going through the motions and doing these t time loops with her just to get closer to her and get to know her better as a person and i think that part would be a bit more interesting at least give her a meaning it would give her some motivation as to why she is um doing this and she's content with doing the time loops over and over again because it's kind of implied in the script at one point i can't remember exactly but i think it's implied that she's like aware of the time loops and i'm not sure why any person would be fine with their life being just put on hold like that uh for someone else so that kind of took me out of the story a little bit um and i think it'd be better if she's a bit more developed Okay, so now with the time travel aspects, specifically the sci-fi part. So essentially, like I said, I'm a sci-fi action guy, so I really like to dissect the, the science fiction. And I know this isn't a science fiction film per se, but I think that being said, if you're going to be incorporating that, it can't just be a gimmick. There should be some logical consistency to it. And by no means does it have to be perfect. There's obviously going to be lots of problems with time travel. Even if you look at big budget films like Edge of Tomorrow or Looper, there were lots of problems. Uh, I think the main question at the end of the day is, does it take you out of the story? And in general, I would say holistically, no, it did not. Like I was following the story and I, I liked it and I didn't mind it. And even when we reached the end, I was okay with the stuff. But there were some moments in the script that did take me out. And I think they need to get sorted out. So one was, for example, it's implied, like I said, that the, the device is a time travel device. So you can go back in time way beyond 24 hours and change the past. And it's implied that changing the past affects the present. Now, the problem with that conceit, I think, is that every time she goes back into the machine, she is essentially going into a different timeline. You know, it's not the same timeline. So, it's so like, when she's going back all the way into Gary's childhood and changing him for the future, well, what future are we talking about? Because she just went into one timeline and changed him. And it did this plot doesn't the sorry the script does not tell you whether when she goes back into the machine is she going back into the same timeline and if that is the case that's the only time it would make sense but if that is the case then how come gary does not remember every time um sheila is coming back if she indeed is going back into a same timeline so the script has some internal contradictions there it's either you're going back into the same timelines in which case gary should remember sheila or they're going back to a different timeline each time in which case her changing the past would not affect the present so i think that that was a big part a uh, big problem for me with the script because it it kind of took me out of the story a bit and just made it seem like there were conveniences going on for the writer or for the story or for the plot and it wasn't following its own rules and its own logic so i think that's something that needs to get uh, sorted out because that was really the only thing that that took me out of it now in the very end another spoiler it's implied just flippant, flippantly that she can go into the future as well and um uh, I'm not sure how I feel about that. That I feel like is going too much and it kind of actually, for me thematically, it took away from the story because the whole point of the story at the end of the day is Sheila is content with doing the time loops because she's afraid of going into the future. Um, and that's for two reasons. One is that she doesn't, she's worried that the time, time machine may not be there, in which case she won't be able to go back and fix her mistakes. But B, she's worried that if she is goes to the, if she does go to the future, she's not going to be with Gary. Um, 
And at the end, basically, it's just a cheat. Gary goes into the future and says, hey, we're fine, we're fine. And I thought thematically that really undermined what the whole purpose of the script was, which is you don't always know what's going to happen in the future. And that's part of love. It's taking a chance and it's having faith in someone. And in this one, it just kind of took it away. Now, it's possible Gary didn't really go into the future and he's just asking Sheila to take a shot with him, uh, take a chance with him. Um, but still, I felt that that could have been clarified a bit more, and I think thematically it undercut itself a bit. But those are my uh, quick thoughts on Meet Cute. Again, like I said, overall I enjoyed the script. I'd give it uh, about 7.5 out of 10. I didn't think it was as inventive and as original as um, Script Shadow was making it out to be, but I do believe it did enough to keep me engaged and was, like, different. It was not the typical thing, because in most time loop thrillers what we're seeing is uh, you know, the sci-fi element and being a thriller and action. In this one, it was a comedy, a lot of dialogue, um, some funny moments. And so overall, I think if this is your type of, if you, this is your cup of tea, you should give it a shot. And I hope you guys enjoyed this review. Thanks for watching.